Even from the inaugural speech, it was evident that change was needed and that the WFEB held the seeds to that change. A major takeaway at the 2013 symposium was mutual understanding that business needs to shift from its traditional short-term orientated approach to a new paradigm. Core to this conception is that businesses must begin to generate value by tackling society's major needs and problems. So what can we as the private sector do to aid the government, to partner with the government, with aid agencies, with NGOs, to accelerate the process of relief and rehabilitation? It is really an opportunity for us to reflect more on this as we go through the day. And I want to uh, invite all of you to really uh, think hard, you know, think deep, think big, think lateral even on what we can do to bring about that sustained change. I want to challenge us to think about, about transformational impact. I want to challenge us not to be satisfied with the outcome of this symposium, this conference, with the confines of 200 or so people sitting in this room. How connected do we feel? Because our ability to create shared value really depends on how connected we feel with our stakeholders, how connected we feel with the community or the world we belong to or the environment we operate in. And what courage do we have sometimes to do different things? Because uh, if things were easy, all of us would be doing it. So what is our quotient of courage, really? And what is the ability for us as organizations to care and share? And I would even challenge you to say that it is very easy for each of us as individuals to express this, this emotion, you say, or feeling, you say, of caring and sharing. But at an organizational level, how can we institutionalize that? It is important that we share these values, that we improve these values. We also need people in the business who do not only keep these rules, we need people who not only respect uh, these rules, I believe we need uh, people in business who serve um, these rules and to serve these values. Amongst the highlights of the conference was the launch of the first module of the historic online ethical leadership curriculum. Designed in self-study modules, this program aims to empower leaders with the wisdom and tools needed to strengthen their response while facing ethical dilemmas. We would like everybody at the forum who's present here today to become co-owners of this initiative. So your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions, your active participation with respect to your time is most welcome and we look forward to that. Thank you. This is a historic moment to have this uh, leadership curriculum uh, because um, I feel and think uh, there are too many curricula that are misleading the people and not uh, really telling the whole story uh, of what you could achieve uh, in life and uh, in your job. And uh, what we have seen only now, and it's a little part of the whole uh, story, is, is very powerful and um, I think uh, that it's so uh, important uh, to have this uh, on board. Uh, we know uh, firsthand that private sector development doesn't occur in a vacuum. Uh, it happens only when governments, private sector, civil society work together to ensure that businesses operate and grow in ways to promote prosperity for all. The world needs to create 600 million new jobs over the next decade. A critical pathway out of poverty is an open and transparent connection to local and global markets. It is where inclusive business models have a critical role. If you ask anybody in business um, how long you want your company to be around for, most don't answer one year, three years, five years. Most just naturally think it's going to be around forever. But if you think of the challenges that we've outlined today, um, along with another stat that I was uh, struck by, that there's still 400 million children living in the worst case of poverty around the world, um, until those change and that number becomes zero, um, we're not in an environment where our business is going to be successful forever. What, what is the responsibility of the businesses? And uh, from my point of view, that means less and at the very end, no impact to the environment. To reach uh, this sustainability, I would say it's a very, very long journey. And our task is to do our best to reduce that. Businesses do not act by themselves, as governments do not act by themselves, or schools do not exist by themselves. 
Behind an organization, we have people. The conference also saw the annual Ethics and Business Award given to honor corporations, innovators, and NGOs that have demonstrated the importance of human values and ethics in life and in the business arena. But life can be sometimes really full of surprises, and uh, this is one of them. Um, we are very um, happy and grateful to receive this award. And uh, on behalf of the people that I'm working within the small foundation, um, thank you very much for honoring us. So we are very honored that Novartis has been recognized with this prestigious award from the World Forum of Ethics and Business. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Lubbers, for these kind words. And thanks to the foundation for this recognition. It's a great encouragement to the work of Greenpeace. In a world like today, I think it's very important to be very much transparent because there's a lot of mistrust now um, on this planet. I think what you have here is many people who want to make sure that as they pursue and develop their businesses, they create social wealth. That's where leadership forums like this can help to make people realize that it's not just about doing something good. It's really about what is your core activity? And is your core activity an activity that is socially valuable and that is operated in line with the needs of the people and of nature? The forum today, along with the training package that we saw introduced today, I think those, both those things are you know, going to be key to raising the awareness of ethics in business, especially among schools, the new leaders coming up. And I think um, if we utilize this training, engage more with universities, um, the, the new business leaders that are going to be coming up, I think that's going to be a great influence. The World Youth Forum creates an open platform for the young people of today to voice their message to the world's top decision makers. We, the participants of the World Youth Forum for Ethics in Business 2013, have forged bonds that now connect us through the world. It is a pleasure to be here with my friends who are now more like brothers and sisters. We, representing four continents, are here to engage and represent the existence of justice of, by taking active responsibility in tackling society's problems and incorporating shared value amongst businesses. And there are many positive examples across the world, across the globe, of how young people are doing amazing work, how young people are trying to make a change. Because young people are part of the solution. We are not the problem. We must come together and we must refuse to accept the prevailing situation and the social attitudes that being unethical is the norm. The mind is there to translate the heart. The question is, are we open to the possibility that the answers to our greatest challenges have actually been hiding in plain sight? The wisdom and technologies exist today. And so, if we have the keys, what's the obstacle? Imagine, and this is really my dream, that whenever we employ someone, that employee comes to the employer and saying, look, dear sir, this is my ethical standards collection. You had to behave this way if you want me to be your employee. <laughs> the art of living is essential a capacity to go for the positive. I heard that from Sri Sri, the very beginning. So it stimulated to request my colleagues, the group who wrote together the Earth Charter, allow me a few words at the very end of that. And there I wrote down the joyful celebration of life. So that's a key factor. So that's what I wish you all in your personal careers the joyful celebration of life. Now, if you can take these types of platforms, and enable access to millions of people. That's the power of the World Forum for Ethics and Business. That's the ambition we need to strive for, to scale up inspirational examples, to scale up tools and platforms by which millions of companies can benefit and the poor who are the beneficiaries of those companies can benefit. So we have a war against poverty. And we have 300 million entrepreneurs who can be a revolutionary army that can join this war. How we enlist them is the real challenge, opportunity, and privilege of the World Forum for Ethics and Business.